excuse my morning look, <laughs> it's Wednesday morning. Uh, I'm going off to do a clean this morning as usual. Oh dear, I put my back out on Saturday, cleaning. And as I say, it's now Wednesday. It's kind of getting better. But it was, I don't know what I did. I must have, I don't know if I pulled a muscle. It's something I've done before. And it was right across my lower back. And after a couple of days, it shifted, and it shifted down into my right hip, um, which almost makes it feel like sciatica, but I get sciatica in the other side. So I've kind of been crawling around a bit the last few days. Walking's okay, but getting up, sitting down, bending over, in and out of bed, has been a nightmare. And has kind of ruined my sleep patterns because every time I turn over it hurts. Anyway, so I'm going to be going off to clean this morning and then because it was a bank holiday I didn't go and do my Tuesday evening clean so that means this evening I've got to go and do that as well. Um, and I need to be back, make sure that I'm back in time to watch Spring Watch this evening because Spring Watch started this week. I've read a couple of articles recently about taking a year out, taking sabbaticals from work and things like that. And I've kind of taken kind of taken a sabbatical from my business because business is rubbish at the moment and I've been focusing on all the little side hustles and all the things that are actually making me money. So it doesn't matter. And at some point I will refocus again and kick the business off again and we'll be back into normal. But we're not in normal times at the moment. And certainly at the point where I stopped running the business regularly, which I suppose I no really noticed earlier this year, I, I've wondered about changing my work routine. I've never been very good at separating work and home life. Even when I was working full time, I was always doing things on the side. I can't sit down, I can't sit still, I can't just do nothing. I can't take time out, I just always have to be doing things. So in the evening when I'm watching TV, I'm doing all the surveys or I'm doing something on spreadsheets or I'm doing something on ancestry and doing family tree stuff. I can't just sit and watch something on TV. I'm just one of those people that's up and down like a yo-yo. But I've wondered about whether I should try and get a bit more separation. So what I tend to do, I work, I think, a reasonable amount of hours. I reckon I work about 48 hours across all my side hustles over the course of a week. But I graze across it throughout the week. So effectively I'm working seven days a week because there is no day where I'm switched off to work. But I do it in little bits, so I'll record a video, I'll spend a couple of hours editing a video, I'll go off and do something else. So I don't have, so I kind of have a good work-life balance because all my work is my own. But I don't because I'm grazing across it seven days a week. So I'm wondering whether I should impose a two days off rule. But not do it like everyone else does it, so not just take the weekend like most people or some people do and I was thinking about taking two days a week and saying right these days I am not going to make any YouTubes or I'm not going to edit YouTube I'm going to stay off the internet I'm not going to do the surveys which is tricky because this is income you see um, and purposefully take out two days where I go out and do things because it's very easy for me to just graze my way through work constantly and not go out and do anything. I'm quite lazy like that. You know, I, I, I've spoken before about how I worry about how fast the year's going and what have I done with my year. But I don't make the effort to go out and do stuff. That's the problem. Um, so I'm wondering about whether to take two days out during the week and say, right, on this day, I'm, I'm going to use this as a walking day. And I will go out and 
hike a route or walk in nature or something and take a day out and then I don't know what to do with the other one but um, a lot of that will be weather allowing and we've entered re-entered what seems to be a very wet phase at the moment and it's just tipping it down every day and I glimpsed on a headline that we're going to have a very very wet summer this year although never ever trust the news they're all gloom and doom so I'm not sure maybe even if I just take one day a week and say right there is one day a week where I'm not going to do anything that's work related I can't see it happening because I can imagine even if I go out for a day and don't do anything when I come back in the evening I will be sitting there doing surveys and things because it's income. I don't want to drop income, but also I don't have set hours. It's very easy for me to just pick up a phone and do some work or sit with a laptop for 20 minutes and do some work. So I'm not sure how I'm going to get disciplined with that. Uh, I feel like I'm, you know, let's do one thing at a time. I'm reining in the eating a bit. You know, all the processed bread has now gone. Um, I don't know that I... I haven't missed it, it's weird, I haven't missed reaching for something that's bread light and spreading peanut butter on it or something as a snack. Um, so I don't know whether that's working, whether that's kicked in yet. I bought a load of fruit the other day so I've been snacking on that so I'm still reaching for things. I haven't got out the habit of not wanting to reach for a snack in between meals. But I think that's going to take time. You can't change long-term ingrained habits overnight. If I can first get to the point where I've weaned myself off the ultra-processed rubbish, if I get off the bread, all the bread products, and focus on the sugar as well, and then I can start to work towards... Well, if I haven't got anything to snack on, maybe I will just start to snack less. I mean, it's not like I'm hungry or anything. Anyway, so challenges, little things at a time. And, you know, nothing happens overnight. We're, we're kind of educated to believe that, you know, if you want to lose weight, you know, three weeks and you're down to your magic weight. There's no effort involved. We don't put enough effort on anything. Uh, we just assume that everything happens overnight and we don't have to work hard at it. And things you really do have to work hard at. I've always worked hard on like weight loss and fitness and then relapsed because I work too hard and then I go oh I can't do this anymore I've had enough so I'm trying to do it better and rebuild better habits back in habits that have slipped badly over the last um, oh how long <sighs> probably since I've been here six years it's been slowly slowly creeping back in bit by bit and bit by bit and I've not kept up my standards and of course I've got lazy and it's easy when you live on your own sort of thing so um, yeah just uh, just trying to go back to square one again it's a constant battle um, at least it keeps me occupied so here I am I finished my Wednesday clean and I'm just going to nip to Tesco's on the way bit back because I've seen a couple of freebies on the cashback apps and I have some vouchers. I, uh, I've been here about ha half an hour and I had a text come through on my phone and I had a quick glance and it was, um, it was my friend who, uh, had the cancer diagnosis at the beginning of the year and I found out quite recently and so I glanced at the name and then I opened the message and it wasn't her it was her husband and she passed away this morning so this is turning into a ropey week um, I was going to text her today as well because she had her next treatment in a couple of days 
and I was just going to send her a message to say good luck, hope it goes okay, just look after yourself when you come out and that hasn't happened. She was so determined that this wasn't going to beat her. So that's a really sad way to do today. It's so weird, I'm losing so many more people now. Well, you do as you get older, I suppose. But so often it's, it's like cancer diagnosis now. Everyone, there's cancer everywhere. So I'm running out of friends here in the north. I know lots of acquaintances here, but I don't know lots of people as proper friends. Um, so my closest friend up here, she died last March, a year ago in March, not actually from cancer, but from the aggressive treatments that she'd had over the years for two bouts of bad cancer. I can't remember exactly what they were, but she'd fought it twice and it had left her with heart damage and whatever. And she always said she was gonna never, never gonna make old bones. And she was late 50s. And so my friend who's just passed away today, she was about the same age. Oh my goodness, just, and so I ploughed through, I wanted to stop and just cry and do what you do when you found out someone you know has just died, but I, I had another two and a half hours of cleaning to do and I just kind of pressed on and focused on that and now that I've come out I just feel kind of deflated. I don't have any of that emotion left at the moment. I'm sure it'll kick in later because I'm just going to get this Tesco run out the way and then we'll head home. Okay so I am back from all of that. Uh, I ended up going to two supermarkets just because. So first I went to Tesco where on um, Checkout Smart I got this for free and these were half price uh, which meant I paid 50p but I didn't because the whole lot came to £2.70 and I paid on a gift card so I have made back uh, one pound seventy and fifty p on my gift card for those. I then went to Sainsbury's because Sainsbury's had the other thing. I wasn't going to bother, but it's keeping my brain occupied. So these were for free, and because I wanted to buy them on Nectar Points, so they were free. I needed to. That was a pound. So I needed to boost it up to £2.50. Turned out because I was buying through Nectar, these were actually in 75p. So I went looking for deals. I found sweet and crunchy stir fry for 39p. That was £1.50. Um, fine beans or dwarf beans, they were £1.21 down to 29p. And I bought two of those. And I spotted some Ardennes pate, which was 110 and came to 89p. So that whole lot there came to £2.61. I paid £2.50 on Nectar Points, so I paid 11p. And that is the end of that. Um, tonight being a Wednesday, um, I said on my last post, which I think is on a different post, that I didn't do the clean over at the business on Tuesday evening because it was a bank holiday so they'd only be back for one day. So I'm going to go over and do that this evening but I'm not going to go to Morrison's and do my usual haul because I've got enough in and frankly I'm not in the mood. So I'm going to put all this stuff away, get all this processed, la -di -da, -di -da, -di da and that is that. Right, today I'm going to decant this 
elderflower champagne which has been sitting here for about a week fermenting post flowers and I'm going to decant it into these bottles I love these bottles my parents um, get these because this is how they buy their posh orange um, posh apple juice and so I get them to keep the bottles they remind me of the old style milk bottles that you used to get many many years ago before we used to have milk in bottles um, and they're great for I use them to keep like lentils and rice and all sorts but they're also great for the bottling of elderflower champagne so I have washed and cleaned uh, five of these bottles I'm not too, too sure how many I need and I'm going to use my little funnel and decant into the bottles and then these are going to go into the fridge for the last week and then they should be ready to drink and I'm going to take a bottle down from my parents or a bottle or two depending on how much I've made so this although it didn't seem to froth when I had the flowers in look at it now looking good so what I'm going to do is take the stop it out smells good it smells fermenty and I'm going to literally just tip it straight in and we'll see how that looks so let's see if I can get this to record see if you can see it froth assuming it does as I pour it in good I'm not going to overfill these bottles you can hear it right and then pop a lid on that's number one I think actually while I'm here I'm just going to sample a little tiny bit of this because I'm curious Let's see what it tastes like That's lovely and it has fizz so that's good that's all working well so I'm just going to finish off these bottles ready for the fridge So I'm going to try and top up the rest of these bottles because I don't really have an awful lot to go. So, I don't know, let's, let's do number five. This is a lot of elderflower champagne. Let's see if we can get a fifth. It's not quite going to be a fifth, but it's not going to be far off. And now these will go in the fridge, see the bubbles, and every so often just do a little twist to release the pressure. I hope I've got enough space in the fridge for them, that's the only problem. <laughs> so that's almost, that's probably about four, four and a half litres of elderflower champagne. I always make enough to take home to my parents. Um, this with a dash of gin is always nice. This isn't too sweet. Um, I have made it before where I've made it too sweet. I'd love to make a second batch but I have no room and that's all, pretty much all my bottles. I saw an amazing huge elderflower bush on Wednesday absolutely heaving with flowers 
but I just don't have, I don't think I have the room to keep it. Um, I might have a think about it because it's nice to make the most of the season. Anyway, so I'm going to put these into the fridge now. I don't think I'm going to have enough room for all of them. I'm going to, have to stand a couple up in the vegetable, the vegetable container and just move stuff around. The only problem with having a small fridge and just not having the room for things. Oh God, where am I going to put everything? remove the uh, the bottom shelf this is the problem <laughs> it's in if temporarily right so I'm just going to clean off this shelf while it's out and I'm going to clean off my demijohn and put that back into storage. In autumn, now I know where all these extra elderflower bushes are, in autumn or yeah, early autumn when the flowers that are still on the plants turn into berries, you can make elderberry cordial. You can also cook and freeze them and then use them in apple crumbles and rhubarb crumbles and all that sort of thing. The cordial is really nice. It's uh, like a natural Ribena almost. I really like it. It's great as an as a add for a cocktail, like if you're doing a gin or something like that. So, you know, not getting more of the elder flowers now means more berries in autumn. So I'm just going to use some of the water that I rinsed the bottles in to do this because you don't need to waste the water when you're paying for every drop. Right, that will do. I'm just going to give it a rinse off because when I next use this um, it'll get a proper clean out anyway. This will just help it along. Excuse me. So that's the elderflower situation dealt with. Um, it's easy, it's cheap if you have the right stuff, or you can just make it up as you go along. I mean, I have used the one and two litre um, plastic lemonade bottles in the past and stored elderflower in the fridge with those. As long as you twist the caps regularly so they don't explode you should be all right so you don't have to necessarily you don't have to have glass one but if that's all you've got and if like me you're on a budget and you don't care then that will um, that will do the same job it's not ideal but it's absolutely fine so don't worry too much about that as long as you're keeping an eye on them you should be okay so there you go any questions uh, drop me a line and you can see me drinking this in a week or so's time I should imagine. <laughs>